Well, today's hearing is set to focus on former Vice President Mike Pence. Many are wondering how the committee will use this video here, the release surveillance video showing Georgia Republican Congressman Barry Loudermilk pr bringing people through the building uh, the day before the insurrection. Joining Morning Rush now to discuss further is Joan Grieve, the U.S. politics breaking news reporter for The Guardian. Thanks so much for, uh, for being with us. We, we appreciate it. Thank you. Let's start with the video first and we'll get our way to Mike Pence. Talk a little bit about what you think the importance of the video may be, why it was released a day before uh, today's hearing, and the, and the idea that people were in the Capitol during COVID, not in a touristy part of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And most chillingly, you see video of a guy taking pictures of the security booth and of the stairwell. Walk us through that video and how it's gonna play out with these hearings. Right, well, this video has kicked off a lot of questions about um, Representative Loudermilk's actions that just one day before the insurrection. Uh, as you mentioned, he is seen uh, touring uh, about a dozen people around the Capitol. And in the footage, you can see them taking photos of areas that usually aren't of interest to tourists who are uh, viewing the Capitol, such as uh, hallways and stairwells and uh, security checkpoints. And uh, the committee has uh, requested more information from him about what exactly happened during this tour, because there's concern that, uh, that because there had been previously, it previously been talk, which Loudermilk has denied, that uh, potentially some of the members of this tour were conducting some kind of uh, information gathering um, uh, operation before the insurrection. Again, that is an allegation that Representative Loudermilk has adamantly denied. But uh, I think that we are going to be hearing a lot more of this as the um, as the uh, hearings continue, particularly when you consider it in combination with the fact that the panel has already claimed that me uh, Republican members of Congress sought par preemptive pardons from President Trump after the insurrection occurred. And Congressman Loudermilk has also said that this is a part of a smear campaign uh, that, that, that has no goal but to uh, smear his reputation, basically. So GOP lawmakers, uh, they sent a letter last week about the footage saying that the activity in the video was not deemed suspicious. What questions uh, does inconsistency in the footage raise about the video and what happened the day before the insurrection? Right. So the U.S. Capitol Police uh, is aware that this uh, tour happened and has said that they considered it to be, uh, from what they saw, an, uh, an innocuous tour. It seemed basically consistent with some of the other tours that are conducted at the Capitol uh, on a regular basis, with the asterisk that uh, on a regular basis when we are not in the middle of a global pandemic. But, uh, yeah, so the uh, that was the U.S. Capitol Police's conclusion. I think that the footage released by the committee raises some interesting questions, though, because, as we've already discussed, it is somewhat uh, bizarre and confusing to see uh, uh, members of its typical tour taking uh, pictures of such uh, kind of what should be relatively uninteresting aspects of the building. And Representative Loudermilk has also kind of really tried to lean into this idea that the tour itself, did, did, the tour did not go into the Capitol itself. However, the Capitol complex is a very, um, it's a pretty sprawling grounds. And some of the office buildings uh, that they were, did tour of in the Capitol complex do have some access points uh, to the Capitol itself. And it seems like some of those access points were viewed during the, uh, the tour that Representative Loudermilk led. Mm. Lots of questions, but yeah. it's this idea of potentially inside help that makes mm -hmm. a chilling day that much more uh, chilling. Let me let me shift gears now to, to Mike Pence. Obviously, uh, former vice president, central to what happened that day, resisted in extraordinary pressure to uh, help overturn the results. Explain why he's so pivotal, because if you think back to that time, really, Mike Pence in that moment in fulfilling his constitutional obligation was kind of the last barrier between right. the election uh, and, and something different. He, he, he was a, a bodyguard for democracy that day in, in some ways. So what we learned today should be really riveting because he was at the center of an extraordinary storm. Right, exactly. Uh, Vice President Pence did play a crucial role that day. And a lot of his, um, the reason why he played such a pivotal role was because he, the Vice President traditionally, oversees the uh, congressional certification of the presidential election results. Now, basically, any constitutional scholar you will ask will tell you that that role is meant to be ceremonial. The Vice President does not actually play a decisive role in the certification of the results. 
However, some allies of Donald Trump, including a conservative lawyer who you will probably be hearing a lot about today, named John Eastman, try to really uh, push forward this theory that the vice president could attempt to overturn the results of the election during that certification process. And that was something that the vice president and his allies, who you will hear from today as well, really contested and refused to accept. And Vice President Pence has said publicly that he believes that uh, President Trump Trump was wrong to uh, try to uh, overturn the results and that he does not believe that he had any constitutional authority to try to intervene on January 6th with the uh, certification process. And just to underscore that point real yeah. quick, I've heard enough analysts say that had Pence taken a different direction, right. had he followed what the White House wanted him uh, to do, there was no plan B for what the country would have done in that moment had he refused to certify the results. We would have been in uncharted territory, which is makes what he did that day really that much more important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so before we let you go, I want to get to um, something that the Washington Post is reporting right now, that the committee has now emails between Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife, Ginny Thomas, and Trump lawyer John Eastman. Now we know Ginny Thomas, she's already kind of under the microscope right now because of text messages and communication with former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and other lawmakers of course, to have turn, overturn the 2020 election. If this information is deemed true and credible, what does this then do to the investigation? Could this impact uh, Supreme Court Justice Tom, uh, Thomas? Right. So the committee has said previously or um, some, somewhat indicated that they were not uh, seeking an interview with Ginny Thomas, who is, as you mentioned, the, a conservative activist and the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. But these uh, new e emails do raise more questions. They seem to uh, uh, indicate a direct link between uh, Ginny Thomas and uh, John Eastman, who was that conservative lawyer who was really pushing a strategy to try to uh, challenge the results of the 2020 election. Now, I think it's an open question as to whether these new emails will uh, spur the committee to try to seek her testimony or seek additional information from Ginny Thomas. However, if they do choose to do so, depending on what's revealed, there could be an increased amount of pressure on, uh, on uh, Justice Thomas to recuse himself from some of the cases involving January 6th. There has already been a lot of pressure on that front, I would say. Uh, many um, many uh, Democrats and progressives have uh, said that he should not be involved in uh, the in cases touching January 6th because of the ways in which his uh, wife was communicating with Mark Meadows and now apparently uh, Eastman about the efforts to overturn the election. Yeah, which is just alarming overall that, you know, that there are people that valid, they think that that was a valid concern, that it was false. There are a lot of questions right now, not just about the security yeah. of our justices, but also the ethical matters mm -hmm. involving court as well, highlighted by this case. Yeah. Joan Grief, U.S. politics breaking news reporter for The Guardian. Thanks so much for your time. Getting up early with us <laughs> on this Thursday morning. We appreciate it. Please come back. Thank you. Mm -hmm.